my phone is always ringing these days. Um, <laughs> uh, I get that little beep, that little beep that WhatsApp, the WhatsApp program makes, and it's always somebody I'm working with with a question or a problem or whatever. So I mean, sometimes it's Rajesh because he has some photos that are finished and he wants to deliver them. Um, sometimes it's Rakesh sending me a little drawing he's made and having a question about um, whether or not that's correct. He's looking for an okay, can he proceed? Or he has some new idea and he wants to ask me if his new idea is going to work with my idea. Um, Ganpat's always messaging me because, you know, he has to order a box for shipping something to some exhibition or whatever. We're busy. And I mean, that's one thing, <laughs> you know, the, the idea of the artist as often that the artist sits in a studio and paints in this solitude and this quiet and you know maybe with some classical music on in the background and you know they're intent on making their art. I mean, that's one image of the artist and the other image of the artist is you know sort of the crazy Jackson Pollock type who's busy drinking and smoking a cigarette and throwing paint all over the canvas um, and very involved in what he's doing but I mean for many many artists um, that's a very romantic notion, and, and making art is a day-to-day -day routine. I hate to say that word, but it is a routine. It doesn't mean that you don't have inspiration. It doesn't mean that you don't have things in your heart that you want to say, you know. And sometimes artists like me, who work with assistants and who work with collaborators, we're accused of, you know, manufacturing art, like it's a little factory and we're making it, it's very capitalist, we're making art in a capitalist mode. Uh, might be some truth to that, but that doesn't take away the heart that goes into it. It doesn't take away uh, the thing that you, you have something to say, and, and this whole production line that you've assembled is part of the manner in which you use to say it. You know, and it's still very much your idea coming out, your input and your hard work. Um, creating art for us is hard. I don't, I don't have a holiday or take a day off. I mean, Sundays, I'm always busy doing something. I mean, it's, um, I feel I work morning, noon, and night sometimes. That might be an exaggeration. Of course, I enjoy to go down and have a nice dinner or something. But being an artist to me is sort of a full-time occupation. And I can't imagine myself retiring. I, I don't think any real artist can imagine themselves retiring. It's something that's in you. It's something you've got to do, you know. It, it's, it's You've got to get that work out. You've got to, like express yourself and, and you can't just turn that off like a light switch because oh I'm 68 years old it's time to retire switch I'm not going to do art anymore you know some people can do that if they're working at a, a different kind of job but if you're in the arts you don't retire and you keep working.
So what I'm thinking on, Pat, is that one with the uh, Mandir. Okay. Just the one Mandir, not the two. Okay. And if you can't find that one, then um, the one with the little white monkey, white, like we used in Siraj in the river. Okay. okay? Okay, Jake Prakash, Upre, Upre, Upre on your side. It's nice, there's no wrinkles. I'm surprised all rolled up like that and there's no wrinkles. In it. That's good. Upre Upre Ganpat. Nietzsche Nietzsche, just Torah. Torah Torah. Okay, bus, bus, bus. Deepak, unbutton your shirt. Unbutton your shirt. Good. Very good.
Sparta has been just this really magical place. Um, in the old days, the first four years of the studio in Rajasthan, um, we had a place on Ambavgar Hill um, called Chinar Villa. And that was incredible. It was a beautiful home. I was renting it from a colonel in the Indian Army and beautiful views over Lake Pichula to the Lake Palace and Jagmandir. And you could see everything from Sajangar over to uh, Jagdish Temple. I mean, it was one of the most fabulous views in Udaipur. And after four years when I had to leave that and I moved into Moti Magri scheme, which is my apartment now, um, seemed like coming down. But Ganpat went out and he found this new studio space for me in the village of Varda, which is behind Badi Lake, and it's just been magical for me. I mean, I mean, you can hear the birds now. I mean, there's there's nature everywhere here. We have mongoose, we have peacocks, um, cows, buffaloes, goats, chickens. Uh, you never know what you're going to see. All kinds of birds, um, snakes. Uh, I do get a little nervous about the snakes here, but. Um, and my landlord, Manur Singh, is just an incredible, sweet person. He's been very kind to me. The whole family has been very kind to me. Um, it's a full Rajput village, and everybody likes to have a little beer and cook a little mutton or cook some chicken curry, merg curry, something like that. So it's been a very nice place to work, shoot photographs in my studio. I always call my studio the cow shed because it's really very simple. It's just tins with six poles holding it up. But I mean, we make it work. And then there's the empty concrete home next to it that we use for storage. And we sit on the roof and have parties. Ganpat and Jay Prakash have been with me for over 10 years now and they're like family. They came to me when they were very young. I really don't even know the age that Jay was when he came. He told me he was 18 but I think honestly he was younger. Um, Ganpat I think was 18 when he came to me and um, they help me so much. They do so much for me on a daily basis. I mean so much of what we do could not be done without those those two, um, I think they love me. I, I love them. It's a close relationship. And the same is extended to my artist, to Rajesh and Rakesh. Although I don't live with Rajesh and Rakesh so much, Ganpat and Jay are with me every day. Um, and so there's a certain dynamic that happens because you're with each other every day, except Sunday when they have their holiday. Um, but. Rakesh, Rajesh, even though they don't live with me, that's still very close. I mean, they're my two main collaborating artists, and there's an intense closeness between us. You know, it wasn't always that way. In the early days, it was much more business-like, and it was like, I'll give you this if you give me that. And um, But over the years, through arguments, through happiness, through traveling together, through exhibiting together, to you know, dealing with deaths in the family together, all of this kind of thing, um, you, you become close, you can't help it. It, it. it does become like a family. And I feel Ganpat, Jay Prakash, Rakesh, Rajesh are my extended family. Um, they're the team, they're the rock band. I always compare it to a rock band, they're the rock band. And maybe I'm the leader of the rock band, but I can't make the music without them.
my grandfather i know from my father that he told me always stories of my grandfather that how he had been working in his life and because i was always curious about that and i was asking my father that what his work was and how he learned paintings and then my father told me that he learned painting through his father and so about my grandfather i know that uh, he had been a photographer for the king of udaipur in the in those days there was a court and he was shooting all those important program fair festivals for the royal family and also those days they had a, a black and white photography work was going on nobody has that color process available at that time and my grandfather was taking photographs by himself he was printing them in his dark room and then he was hand coloring them also so that he has been spent all his life in doing photography and then painting and then hand coloring his photos and so how did you end up taking the hand coloring up again what's that story how did you return to it i got return to it uh, like i have seen my father doing this hand coloring photos when i was little kid and those time they were he was painting those little photograph of the king for the uh, local antique dealers and he was also painting those for the uh, jewelry that they used to put a portrait of a king in a jewelry that was colored by hand and then i met vasco in 2006 he has uh, done his exhibition at bagor ki haveli and i went to see his exhibition and then there i saw his photographs and it was i was curious about it like uh, it was he was the first uh, foreigner in town who was doing the exhibition so i went there to see that and i was th- really the first yeah really that was the first i'm the first foreigner in udaipur who had yeah. an exhibition yes you're kidding me no no you are the because i look at that uh, sign and i was like oh i didn't know that there were many photographers has been come and gone yeah but you were the one who approached the bagur kebeli you are the first person really yeah oh wow i didn't know that yes and okay. then i went over there and i saw the exhibition and then i said oh that's cool work but those photos were in sepia and after that i keep meeting vasco and i saw that he was in world in doing some miniature works with the local shopkeepers and one day i saw a painting at his home and i knew that it was done by my friend rakesh and i asked vasco oh, do you know rakesh and he says no and then i said to him that this painting is done by rakesh you introduced me to rakesh yes and as i, I remember i was walking down near um, chanpol somewhere yes. right near where your shop is these days that time and you yeah. came up to me on your bike and you yes. said you want to know who is really painting your yeah. miniatures so i wanted to and i said well of course i do and then coming at your home i saw the black and white photos and i thought oh that's let's do something so we had a talk and then i had an idea let's color the photos and then we just give a try to some photos and so now it's more than 10 years of the collaboration work going on and great thing about this it's like i learned the work in my family but i got more chance to learn more this work in a much better way So what do you think about Chacha? Chacha has a temper, right? <laughs> Chacha has a temper? Chacha Tell me, what was the first time I screamed at you? Do you remember the first time I screamed at you? Not really, but I think the first time you scream was like not on me, you were screaming on Ganpat. Oh. Or or Chinu. Uh, Chinu. 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 Yeah. That was in the days I was at yes, uh, Chinar Villa. Yes, you were very angry and you were throwing the things. And the first day I saw you was like you throw the table. Like it didn't hurt anyone, but I threw just, a table. Yeah, the small, char. Uh, what do you call that? Chowki. Chowki. <laughs> yeah, I threw a chowki. And you were so angry that day, like you were shouting, like everybody want money, nobody want to work. <laughs> I'm not a Lakshmi. <laughs> I did that. Yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Wow, Chacha is angry." And then I left. But then later, two hours, I got a message mm. from you, like, "My gusta is gone. Everybody can come back." <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I get angry, but then I sort of apologize rather quickly. Two hours. To, yeah. I was shocked. I was like, like, what the hell? This is like, it should not be like that. I remember you were really concerned the first time. And yeah. then by the second, third, fourth time, you just sort of thought like, Chacha is losing his cool again. Because you, I was don't, you don't take it real seriously anymore. I was, the first time I noticed was that uh, Rakesh came at your home and something happened that maybe you didn't like the painting or you said something and Rakesh ran away, ran away from your home without wearing his shoes. <laughs> That's right, I was shooting at him and he ran out of my house without any shoes on. Yes. So. Well, then how did he get his shoes back? <laughs> that I don't know, but he ran away from your house. I sort of remember that. I think I called him back and gave he him He was scared shoe. of like, uh, he was like, when I asked him what happened, he says, a oh, chacha, big man with tattoo, like big. <laughs> You get scared. Yeah, Gusa and crazy. Huh? Yeah. But that's okay. <laughs> that's fine. Like sometimes it happens up and down. Yeah. I think I've mellowed with age. I don't get so angry anymore. Yeah. Nowadays you're getting relaxed. Yeah, I know. But I do have a temper problem. I know that. I but often, yes, it can it happen to everyone. Explode. You're very good. You're always very even level. I try to keep my best. Yeah. Cool. I don't want to. I've seen you angry sometimes, but you don't really show it that much. You kind of keep it inside. No, no, it's better. You're generally to, always happy. Better to keep it. What's your philosophy of life? You really believe in happiness. You always be say, happy. be happy. Be happy. That's what I write on my bike. That's what I write on the wall front of my gallery, on my business card. Be happy. That's the main thing. So everything is be happy. Yeah, because you are going to sleep. You don't know if you're going to wake up or not. Right. So just enjoy the moment and stay happy. Jay, are you going to bring some chai? Yes. Yeah? Okay. How is Kaka, Sajan? Kaka is good. Kaka's health good, Sajan? Yeah, Kaka's very good. His health is better than mine. He yeah. enjoys yeah. Bangkok very much. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see what you brought me. Yeah. Do you want to open it? Small, small bottle. Yeah. This is very nice. I feel like I've seen these before, but I, I haven't seen these in real life. I've yeah. only seen them right. in your scan photos that I got. These two are very, very nice. I really like these. These are beautiful. This one's beautiful. The camera's actually a little too big in this one, you know. Yeah, yeah, you made it too big. It's too big for Rallaflex, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. We use it. The, the Rallaflex camera should be like half the size. Uh -huh. you, you painted but it much bigger than it. You know, in your miniatures, it's not this big. Mm -hmm. No, miniatures. So, but I think you were trying to do all this detail. All detail, yeah. Otherwise, so, a little bit more small, smaller cannot, uh, so I detail. Right. I think, I think we leave it be. Hmm? How many years have you worked for me, Jay? Ten. Ten? How old are you now? Twenty-five. When did you start working for me? When you were fifteen? I don't think so. Fourteen. Oh, bullshit. You told me you were 18 when you came. <laughs> That's what you told me. That one. Yeah, now this one I don't think is going to work because the sad is still too small. Um, he's not sitting on anything either. He was supposed to paint a rock. Oh. So Here, no, see, this doesn't work at all. We're going to have to redo this one. Um, the saddle is not big enough. His, his size is not right. And I think what you were supposed to do is paint a rock back here that he sits on. 
Not, yeah. not this, because this is obviously behind. behind. So here you can see this bat, you can see this mukka or whatever hmm. that he carries. And uh -huh. it looks like he's sitting in the middle of air. Yeah. And it doesn't look right at all. So uh, I should a uh, little more color peel like that? No, we're going to do a whole new photo. Huh. Because this thing has to be bigger. Where's a pen? Do we have a pen? Yes. Yes. I'm going to draw right on it. I'm sorry, but mm. I think it's the best way to do it. This needs... This stuff here mm. should be over here. Mm. Just put it down here. Mm. You have to paint a nice rock in here mm. that he's sitting on. Okay? Okay. You have to paint the rock. Mm. Okay, so this should all be a rock that he's sitting on, mm. like this. I hate painting over this photo because I know we just painted it, but we didn't spend much time on this. So I'm not going to feel bad because it's the best way I can give you the idea. So here's a rock of some sort that you've painted in. Mm. And then he's got to be bigger. His head should come up to like here, you know? Yeah. He's got to, his face this has to be here hmm. rather than there. Everything has to be larger <laughs> and his feet should come out, you know. Hmm. So he, he has to be much larger than this because um, he looks like a little boy. And the other thing is you're trying to put him behind these mud guns, but I feel even if you had a leg crossing the mud or something, hmm. you know, it's a, you bring him forward. Hmm. He looks too far back for the camera maybe. Yeah. Um, so this is a redo. He didn't go, he didn't get big enough. Arcana is basically a word for a workshop. And in the old miniature system, uh, historically, generally in the miniature Arcana, you had a delegation of responsibilities and abilities. So some artists were extremely good at painting, say, trees. Other artists were assigned the task of painting figures. And other artists, generally the very best artists, the leader of the Karkanas, were assigned to paint the faces, which were considered the most difficult, and also the hands, because the hands were considered the most difficult to paint. Um, and that's been passed down into the bazaar here in Udaipur and Jaipur and elsewhere. Still in Karkanas, you have systems of people working in making a miniature. And then recently we've been working with a miniaturist named uh, Dalpat Singh Jingar. And Dalpat actually came to us for many years. He's been painting the linen backdrops for our photographs that we do out at the studio in Varda. So Dalpat's been doing our photographs, backdrops for a long time. Um, but just recently we've had him, we've brought him in to do some of the backgrounds to our miniature paintings. And the reason that is, is to be honest, we had just got really swamped with work. 
Um, the demand for the miniatures is very high and Rakesh just couldn't keep up. So the way we're working it now is sometimes Dalpat comes in and he does a background for us in advance and then Rakesh comes in, he looks at the background that Dalpat has painted and Rakesh has his own way of adding finesse to it. He, I want to use the word corrects it in some manners. He brings it out, he adds detail, and then of course in the end it's Rakesh who adds um, the final details, the figures, the animals, you know, all those little things that make it an RBJ miniature. But what Dalpat is doing is basically when he paints his background, he's basically making the basic template that Rakesh can come in and then finish. How are you? Yes. So it's like half done, not quite still working. I don't know. He thinks maybe by the end of April we get it finished. I think by the end of April. Hmm? So 20 days, end of March. And then if you, when you finish this, then I pay you for this. Okay. What color are you making the sky? Yes. As well? As well? As well? Is sky color? Yeah. Uh, you have a photo? Is the light blue? Light blue. Light blue. As well, light blue. Light blue. Okay. Uh, little red side, little. Only on here, the last one. A little bit of red shade in there. More likely red shade. A little bit of uh, After some sunset or something. Yeah. Yeah. And here tree. Or sunrise. This tree. This tree. Okay. This tree. These trees all look really, really beautiful. I love these. Total me. change. I, I, I love the way you're doing them each a little different. Really uh, you your photos that are no uh, same same tree. Total. Uh, total. I'm a little worried about this on these hills because it almost seems a little too big. You know, for the size. Little bit here. Yeah. 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 I yeah. might have Rakesh do some touching up this one's kind of like, I don't know. They seem like the spots are a little too big for it. Why couldn't? Yes, it's okay. This total light green. After yeah. this, only this one. Yeah. one more. So what's the, what's the uh, paint you're using? The paint is good, but only for this area. Are you using the gouache? Yes, are you using the gouache or something else? Yes. Yes, you are? It seems like this is really thin paper. Is this what All paper like this, this? You know, now we have. No, both same. One seat. Okay. So this one's specially thin. Wow. It works thinner. No, this one's thinner. Because this is kind of like. Bumpy because yes. it's so thin. I don't know if that's good. It's a patlo. In mount it get hmm? connected right. Paper is very thin. Patlo paper, patlo thin. We don't have any thicker paper than that. No, we have thicker, but same same. We pick up both look same. Not one thick or one thin. So they both are like same. Can I take this off? I want to take this off. I'm really yeah. Because I don't want to work for it. This is a little temple in the village of Varda on the land that Manwar Singh owns. And right this away is a cenotaph where somebody, not was buried, but it's a memorial to somebody who's been cremated. And I'm quite sure I'm gonna have my own cenotaph. I'm thinking there's a hill just behind my studio and it's a beautiful hill nothing's on it and I think what I plan to do is build a um, build a nice little cenotaph up there but someplace 
you know, where people can sit. I want it to be a place where people can come, can drink beer, can smoke a beady, can talk and enjoy themselves. Um, sort of a place like this, I don't want it to be anything that's too holy, you know. In fact, I'm thinking of inscribing it, let no religion claim this place. But somewhere in it, there'll be written um, for Kaka and Chacha, which is Tommy and I. So that's the memorial that I'm thinking of. And, uh, you know, I'm 63, so I don't know. So I think about these things because I'm 63 years old. And, and Ganpad and Jay tells me I'm silly because I'm thinking about these things. And they say I'm still going to live to be another 20 years old. But I don't know that. So that's the way I'm thinking. So, yeah. how did it go? Can I look right yeah, sure. Sure, 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 now is I think size is perfect. Oh, wow. and, uh, now really, really you are no, very good. Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> uh, yeah. Th this size is really perfect. Uh, perfect know, I was sitting here thinking I was before I come. Huh. I was thinking you're gonna forget to do the little red border. No, no, I, 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 I remember. Much. Yeah, border is looking very good. And, and yeah, by, and by making the man a little smaller small. now, all the here and the. Chaja, your calculation, really, really, man, calculation is right. Now is very perfect. Because now the huh. milk guy, oh, no, no. the milk guy, yeah, and the cow, they all seem big. Big, 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 big. Uh, uh, this uh, bull is big. Uh, this bed, this bed, this bed, gather, and and look here, equal. Yeah, I, I heard that. This, this was this pink, so I. Yeah, yeah. Now both of those little pools. Huh, little, 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 little. And I think the gadger looks just right. I think it looks very nice. Huh, gadger, gadger is perfect, and uh, we can look. You think they're gonna know their gadgers? There's no little green, no gadger when it comes out of the. Huh, you green. green uh, I saw here. You put a little green there. Huh, okay. uh, one uh, I saw here, but oh, okay. very small, so cannot. Uh, Otherwise, it's too huh. much. You think? Too much? Huh? Too much? No, no, no. Yeah. I think I think this is good. I think mm -hmm. they will be. Yeah, able this to is sell. this is good. And look, such a Kiran said, Neil guy said, and really perfectness. Yeah, yeah. This Kiran mm -hmm. board, this, this is like really good. And especially your calculation was really very nice. The colors is nice. Nice the colors. Colors nice. Well, before I was just too big. I, I, <laughs> I was, Really? That's like I say when you're next to a cow, you're not looking down at the no, cow. No, no, no. The cow's back is no, 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 is very, really, very really perfect. So. Yeah, I'm sure you your calculation. <laughs> New miniature. Yeah. Now, now and, and, what we need to do is we need to do the gold. gold. Yeah. So this will go to Yadavs for the gold. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they can do the gold. Yes. Uh, now, and, uh, uh, only sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I first met Rakesh, um, he was working as a bazaar painter, meaning he was painting for the tourist market in Udaipur, um, which meant basically he was painting birds on note cards, birds and flowers on note cards. And this is very common because in the miniature arcanas, it's almost like a production line many times for producing small tourist quality miniatures and what they do is they tape a bunch of papers or silks onto a board and one artist is sitting there painting the leaves and kind of turning the board like this and, and then it's passed to another artist and that artist is maybe painting a bird you know or a very simple bird or something like that and it's like a production line. It's a production line for the tourist market in Udaipur. Uh, many people who buy the little cheap miniatures in <laughs> places like Udaipur and Jaipur don't realize that. Of course, there's much higher quality and the higher quality miniatures are produced by artists who really put a lot of heart into it and it's their own individual work. But there's really um, not that much of a um, concept of signing and taking credit for individual pieces many times because so many times it is a collaborative effort. So when I met Rakesh coming from this tourist bazaar tradition 
and you know somebody was basically painting a lot of birds on note cards um, it was a big opportunity for him because he always aspired for higher things his great grand uncle was Ram Gopal Vijay Varghia who was a very well-known artist um, from India uh, he taught at the Jaipur School of Art I believe um, very well known, did beautiful, beautiful um, watercolors and sort of a miniature style that was almost like a Bindranath Tagore, maybe something of that order, but I'm not totally equating to that. But Rakesh aspired to be more like his uncle, Ram Gopal Vijay Varghia. Rakesh wanted to be a fine artist, and here he was trapped painting birds on note cards in the tourist bazaar. So when the two of us connected, it was good for him, it was good for me. The two of us made this incredible pair. We, we, we both saw opportunity. It wasn't just I, myself, seeing opportunity in Rakesh, but it was also Rakesh seeing opportunity in working with me. And I think uh, Annapurna Garamella captures this so perfectly in her book, The Artful Life of Our Vijay, that she wrote. And she came from Rakesh's perspective when she wrote this book. Um, she told me right off the bat, she said, if I write this book, Waswo, your name's not going to be on the cover. It's going to be called The Artful Life of Our Vijay, and I'm going to be dealing with how an Indian vernacular artist collaborated with an American who entered the Indian scene. And I think that was a brilliant way to approach it, actually. Rakesh, I am down at uh, the Yadavs and checking on the gold beef that they've been doing on some of the miniatures and just letting you know that tonight we're having a little party lakeside at Ambre restaurant about six o'clock so please be there everybody else will be
Okay, that looks good. Deepak, look with your eyes at me. Good. That looks good. That looks good. There's Jay Prakash. Smiling. <laughs> Put it back, Jay. Come on, we need our tree. Okay, hold it. Down a little, Jay Prakash. There we go. There we go. Deepak's looking nice. Yeah? Ganpat, Jay, yes. get closer to Deepak and Siraj. Yeah, okay. Jay, turn, turn your plant around like this. Yeah? Yeah, Upre, Jay. Upre. Okay, Ganpat, I see your arm. Back further, back further. Okay, I'm going to zoom in here a little. Ganpat, put yours down just a little. Jay, yours down a little too. There, okay. Good. Good. Deepak, look me. Siraj, look at me. Siraj, your hair is a little messy. Just do something with your hair. In back. In back. Yeah, there. Okay, Siraj, look upre. Good. Can you grab this plant and just pull it like one inch this way? Just a little bit. Or a bus, bus. <coughs> okay. Anke. Anke. Akakuli. Anka Kule? Anka Kule, yes. What does Anka Kule mean? Open eyes. Open eyes, <laughs> Anka Kule. Oh, that looks good. Good. Mm -hmm. Will he hold a beady in one hand? Yes. Can I have him? Do you have a beady? Yes. A beady like what you have to get a beady. I want to see it, so it's got to be kind of like. Okay. okay. There we go. And you have to be. Close to the bottom. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where This is pretty good, I think. It's a now it's all a matter in the eyes. The other thing is that um, I think many people don't understand. They think that um, there's two different bodies of work. They think there's the body of hand-colored photographs that I do with Raja Sony in collaboration. And then they think there's this group of miniatures that I do with R. Vijay in collaboration. 
and many people do not understand the fact that these two series work together. They are actually meant to be viewed together as sort of a narrative because in the miniatures that Rakesh paints, there's always pictured the little man with the white fedora. And this man used to be me, but he became sort of an everyman, a representative of the white foreigner in India. Um, but this man's always carrying a camera. He's always carrying a Rolleiflex camera. Um, so nine times out of ten, the man is photograph is is painted with his camera. Um, so the miniatures are the story of the photographer in India, in so many ways, and that's the way it started. Because I, as a photographer, I felt that you know through my my making photographs, um, I was always looking outward at Indian society in one way or another. However, I was doing it. And through the miniatures, I was able to tell a story of how I thought maybe Indians might be looking at me because how are people looking at this photographer from outside coming in and relating to their country? I hesitate to use the word document as always because I don't see myself as a documentarian in any way, shape, or form. I see my art as more of an exploration of the way these cultural interrelations happen, okay? So I, I never look at my art as documenting India. That's not anywhere near what I'm about. Um, so you look at this man in the um, miniatures with his Rolleiflex, and you have to realize that the photographs that I make with Raja Sony, who hand colors the photographs, these are the photographs that man in the miniature is making. The man in the miniature is making the photographs that we display on the walls as hand-colored photographs by Wazwex Wazwa and Raja Sony. They are tremendously interrelated. And also, if you look at the photographs, you'll notice many of the backgrounds that we use are backgrounds taken from miniature paintings. Sometimes they're taken from our miniature paintings and they're included in our photographs. So. I think that that's one thing that bothers me. People don't understand that. Rakesh, we got a sign. So when these are framed, I'm thinking we're going to float mount them. And there'll be another little, these will be glued in back. Ah, yeah. Probably just with a couple dots of glue mm -hmm. out on the edge of the gold somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I think we can sign them in the middle. Middle, yeah. Middle, okay, middle. very lightly so we don't go yeah. through. All right. Put 2017 on it too. Mm -hmm. Okay, you. Here? Yeah. God, look at all these brushes. Yeah. Wow, that's nice. Um, so this is an idea. <clears throat> which I had and I've changed it already. So we have this backdrop, or background. Yeah. Here. Mm -hmm. And what I'm thinking, yeah. it's the same background, mm -hmm. but it's like a, um, like a hoarding. Hoarding. Like a hoarding. Mm -hmm. So, you know, many times I go Goa and I see the beautiful ocean mm -hmm. and then there's all these hoardings in front of the ocean that have pictures of the beautiful ocean ah, to nice. see, yeah, but yeah. you can't see the real ocean oh, because of the hoardings yeah. in front of it. And that, well, yeah. this is kind of the idea, but this is this is actually like a backdrop to one of my photos in the studio. Mm -hmm. So this is painted the same way as this, mm -hmm. but you see it's angled a little bit. Mm -hmm. Angle, so yeah. you have to get this kind of angle feel to it, mm -hmm. and then some kind of support, mm -hmm. and then there'll be Cha Cha with his camera, okay. and one model standing yeah. in front. Mm -hmm. So there's a model in front, right. you know, we can think what the model is going to be, Yes. man, woman, man, whatever. Man, 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 man. We can make it silly, yeah. we can make a woman with pot on her head or something just stupid like that. Right. And, and a photograph of that with this and then that'll complete this. You like that? Yeah. that yes, yes, I like. Yeah. Seriously, you do? Ah, yes, yes, yeah, yes, you yeah. do? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. 
Initially, I was going to do something totally different with this idea, but I think this would work well. And I think it would complete it nicely. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay. For Rakesh and I, for nearly 10 years, it was just the two of us. I was conceptualizing, he was painting. Um, but there were some exceptions. Um, one was Shankar Kumawat, and Shankar Kumawat did our borders, and still does do our borders. He does very ornate, fine borders, exquisite craftsmanship, a lot of detailing. They're generally jungle scenes, sometimes with a monsoon shower clouds, um, crocodiles, lotus, deer, elephants, all of these things pop up in his borders and they're extremely finely painted. Um, we consider him one of, you know, the most talented people that we work with. No degree centigrade. Painting is fine. You know, when you look at Rakesh, some of Rakesh's early miniatures um, were very naive. I mean, he, I saw right away that he had tremendous amounts of talent and, and had very good brushwork um, and certainly a, a heart that wanted to be a serious artist. Um, but there was a certain naive, childlike quality to the early miniatures. But people adored that. I mean, the thing that we really discovered is that people are collectors. The audience really adored that naive quality. And as Rakesh has progressed, because over the 10 years we've worked together, his technique has progressed tremendously. So now his painting quality is just exquisite. And sometimes I worry because it's like, well, we don't want to lose that naive quality, which was initially what attracted people to the miniatures, though I think it's still there. Um, and I think, you know, artists have to grow. They just have to grow. And Rakesh has grown in his um, own way, but I still think he's maintained his own spark, his own spark of, I want to use the word genius. Um, I think Rakesh has it in his own way.
Wow, this is just beautiful. You like it? Yeah, Rajesh, this is just gorgeous. This is, well, it's always been one of my favorite. And so is this one. This one's just gorgeous. This is, sort of work in the, this is the latest one brought over. He just finished painting. Yeah. It's called Atna Vratri. And it's just gorgeous. I and love look, to paint your photos. And look, Rakesh. Rakesh just finished a miniature that came His over. His work is also very nice. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of details. Yeah, this is gorgeous. I love both of these. Yeah. So, so Rajesh, yeah. Thank you for are, interviewing me. Yeah, thank you for interviewing me. Are we done? <laughs> yeah, we are done. We're done? done. We're done. We're yeah. done. Yeah. Mm -hmm.